Hello everyone. In this video we will visit the door interface of ADECOCAM once again but this time the issue will be deriving new door models out of existing ones. This is one of the ways you can use to create new door models. There are others such as using the programming infrastructure ADECOCAM comes with in every installation but this will be discussed in other short tutorials like this one. Let's create an empty project card and reach the door interface. What I will do here is to pick up a model, copy it with a different name, modify the model parameters of this new one and use it as a new door model. This is basically one of the easiest ways to create a new model without doing any programming of any kind. Programming gives you absolute power to do anything though. Anyway, if your new model you have in mind is similar to another one in your library or it can be achieved through modifying the parameters of an existing model in your library, you don't have to design and program it from scratch. Let's take the model 130. Right click on it and select view 3D model to have a closer look at it. You can fit the model by clicking on this button here or you can right click and hold to rotate. This model has the sophistication I need for our demonstration. It must have a number of model parameters and therefore one can derive different models out of it. Let's pick this model and assume I would like the site structures to be a bit wider as well as, say, this channel to be narrower in my derived new model. Return back to the library view by close and again right click on the model and this time select library and duplicate to create an exact same copy of the model 130. The newly created model appeared as a new item in the library. I can rename it by right click on it and go to library and rename but I'd like to keep the current name as it reminds me from which model it is derived. This model is exactly the same as the original one but this will change in a minute. To see and modify the model parameters of the newly created door right click on it and select edit parameters. This is where we set the parameters of the model 130 underscore 1, the newly created one. The model parameters window is composed of a standardized image of the model which is automatically generated from the STL data out of CNC simulation of the part with snapshots taken from three different angles in attempt to make the model parameters clear for the library user. Below is a list of model parameters, their descriptions as well as their current values. On the right are the model name and a text field in which you can take notes related to the model. All the data on this page are instantly saved and every time you open this window they will be visible to you. As a library user you might need this information as well to decide whether or not to pick a specific model for production. In my library this text field is composed of layer names used in each model. Here the layer names summarize trace types and tools to be assigned in a certain format. This specific model we derived has three layers and it requires three tools for the production. The letter G at the beginning is for GRU, C is for cylindric geometry and 10mm says that the tool has a diameter of 10mm whereas V90 means that the tool has a V type with 90 degrees angle. So each layer tells the user the cam operation type such as G for GRU and the type such as C or V for cylindric and V shape respectively and finally the tool measures such as 10mm for 10mm and 90 as the tool angle. These are the layer names you will see when you import the project layers while creating the procedure for toolpath generation. Working with procedure is covered in another tutorial. Let's get back to setting the model parameters. The parameter that corresponds to the width of the site structure is apparently G and the parameter setting the width of the channel is H. I read their current values to be 40 and 40. Let's double the width of the site structure so the variable increases from 40 to 80 and half the channel width so the variable decreases from 40 to 20. This change is also saved now and the model is ready for use. Let's generate two doors out of both the models 130 and 130 underscore 1 and inspect the differences in cut plan. I'm closing the model parameters window and adding lines to my cut list. I'd like the dimensions of the two door instances to be say 500 times 700 and 700 times 500 as this will allow us to verify that the models are parametric and also confirm that this feature does not change with the model parameters getting modified. Our cut list is complete adding the doors to the project card. The parts become available on the project card. Dragging the material to the second column for nesting, selecting the plate stock and voila. 
As you can see, the doors we created have the desired differences. Wider side structure as well as narrower channel as we said. And of course, the model remain parametric under varied dimensions. Very quickly and in the same way, let me show you another example with a different model. I am picking this time the mean ring C, duplicating it and changing the model parameters to create a slimmer frame compared to the original one by making it closer to the edges and by decreasing its width roughly three folds. Adjusting the list, choosing a different material so that these will appear as new line on the project card. Now adding them to the project moving the newly generated material to the second column for nesting so that we can visualize as you can see the frame of the derived model is slimmer without losing its parametric nature as an adecocam or library item in this video we visited the door interface of adecocam and demonstrated one of many ways to create a new door model deriving from existing ones through model parameter modification thanks for your attention